Town Council, I apologize for our tardiness. We were downstairs in an executive session. Um, we do have a public hearing uh, first before we go into our regular meeting. Uh, the public hearing notice is as follows. A public hearing has been scheduled to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the amendment of Chapter 58, Article 3, Section 58-61 through 58-66, prohibition of panhandling, solicitation, and other activities from unsafe locations of the Enfield Town Code. And may we have roll call, please. Councilor Arnone. Here. Councilor Bosco. Councilor Sakala. Here. Councilor Prasadi. Here. Councilor Davis. Here. Councilor Denny. Here. Councilor Fall. Here. Mayor Copen. Here. Deputy Mayor Lee. Here. Councilor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Suzette. There's nine members present, two are absent. The following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current Tuesday, September 12, 2017. Town of Enfield legal notice public hearing. The Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, September 18, 2017 at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the amendment of Chapter 58, Article 3, Section 58-61 through 58-66, prohibition of panhandling, solicitation, <coughs> and other activities from unsafe locations of the Enfield Town Code. Ground rules of the public hearing are as follows. There is no time limit, but I ask that each person not take up too much time so that everyone will have an opportunity to speak. After each person who desires has had one Thanks. chance to speak, I shall permit those individuals who desire a second chance. After those individuals who desire to speak a second time, I shall permit those individuals who desire a third, fourth, et cetera time. And we ask that you please refrain from the use of personalities. Brian, do you have any information regarding this public hearing before we open it up to the public? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in summary to uh, the public hearing, uh, Council does currently have legislation on uh, the books with respect to panhandling uh, within the town limits uh, based on case law and a review of that law by the town attorney's office. Uh, it was recommended that certain elements of that legislation uh, be changed, and in order to do so, Council is required to adopt legislation, and as part of that process, this public hearing is required by statute. All right, thank you, Brian. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this public hearing regarding panhandling? And I've got to ask it three times for a second time. Anyone interested? For a third? On the panhandling ordinance? Come on up. <clears throat> Good evening. This is on. Is the red light on? Uh, yes. Then you're good. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. Uh, my name is Jim Manning from 60, uh, 6133 Bigelow Commons, Enfield, Connecticut. And I had stopped a couple of times um, to actually try to get to know their backstory of some of these some of these people and understand why they got to where they were, and possibly help them <clears throat> get out of the hole that they've gotten themselves into. Um, some of the stories were interesting. Um, I've given them um, different avenues of how they can try to help themselves. Uh, via behind Subway, they have a a, a um, like a career counseling type uh, behind Subway. I'm not sure if right, yeah. right over here. Uh, it's within walking distance to you know the town uh, town hall. Um, and it's very frustrating because I've, I've talked to them several times um, trying to understand and it seems like that they don't want the help as far as, you know, they, they just say, well, you know, the town, you know, the town needs more services and stuff like that. And I says, well, the town is, they offer a lot in this town. I said, if you go to Springfield or if you go to Hartford, they have a lot more services that you can take advantage of that maybe might help you out. You know, I, I talked to one guy and they offer CDL training. I said, if you get your CDL, you have, 
you're home and you're making money. You're out of the hole. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of these people, they just, um, they just don't want to uh, take some of the advice that I've given them. Um, as we speak right now, uh, some of the panhandlers are actually um, in my lot over Bigelow Commons right next to my van. So it's very frustrating that aspect where they're coming into your, your um, space where you live pretty much, you know. Um, and I've talked to some other people that live in the area and they had said, um, you know, how would you like it if somebody was panhandling while your kids are playing in the background? You don't know their, their history. You know, they could have maybe a mental illness. Maybe that's why they're in a the situation. Um, regardless of what it is, there's always a way that you can get yourself out of any hole. You know, there's always somebody willing to lend a hand and to kind of pick you up. And I think maybe if the town had um, maybe done something as far as the Lagu uh, Laguaria, the, the building over here. Lamania? Yes. Um, I was told that um, they can take a shower is there and such. But I think one of the bigger things is trying to get them a job. And if you're homeless, it's hard to get a job, but it's possible because I talked to them over there and they said you can get a job if you're homeless. So that's kind of not an excuse. You know, that's just a reason to keep doing what they're going to do. But I'm glad you guys are holding a meeting. Um, hopefully there's um, some ideas, some new ideas to try to help these people, you know, because they are part of the community. You know, some people are, you know, they uh, kind of come into the community, you know, looking for freebies and stuff. But if they are part of the community, we should help them out. Um, just a way of going about doing it and finances and, you know, the logistics of it is, is, is challenging, you know, because it shouldn't be necessarily paid on pay taxpayers, do, you know, money. But then again, you know, somebody's going to help somebody. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jim. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this public hearing? Sensing no others, I will declare the public hearing closed. Thank you very much. And we will move into our regular meeting. I'd ask everyone in the audience to please stand for a prayer led by Councillor Peter Falk, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we are gathered for this meeting. <clears throat> May we be guided by your wisdom, your love, and your abiding presence. For your wisdom teaches us about what is truly important and gives us the courage to do the right thing. Your love reminds us that our compassion is not only for those we think deserving, but for all your children who are in need. Your spirit empowers us to recognize the ways in which we are blessed and to build a community of learning that is characterized by joy, creativity, and the spirit of service. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's fix that. Thank you, Peter, and may we have roll call, please. Councillor Falk. Here. Mayor Copen. Here. Deputy Mayor Lee. Here. Councillor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Suzak. Councillor Arnone. Here. Councillor Bosco. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Casati. Here. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Here. Ms. present. Two are absent. Next item on the agenda is our fire evacuation announcement. Just remind those assembled in the audience that in the event that the fire alarm sounds, we all must evacuate the building. Closest exit would be to the rear of council chambers and out to the front of town hall. If you choose to go out the side door to your right and our left, we then ask that you take the back set of stairs to the back parking lot of town hall. And in the event that an AED is needed, uh, one is located in the main lobby on this floor of town hall. Minutes of the preceding meetings, we have one, and that is the regular meeting of September 5th, 2017. Is there a motion by Councillor Arnone, Second. seconded by Councillor Denny? Discussion, Mike? Sorry, uh, through the mayor, one edit on page eight, last, par or last paragraph for town attorney's report. I think the first sentence is, should say suggests if a business or developer 
is issued a permit, how long does it take that permit to get issued through the process? I think it says wishes a permit. Yeah, wishing's okay. It usually takes quicker than <laughs> issuing a permit. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. We'll take that as a, as a friendly amendment <laughs> correction. Any other Sorry. Is it changes? Me? Sensing none by show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? Two abstentions. All right, they pass. Next item on the agenda is, is, is uh, our special guest section. And at this time, I'd ask the council to come to the front. And I would ask Cynthia White. Cynthia here. And any family and friends with you, Cynthia? They may come up as well. So every now and then the council gets uh, the great opportunity to be able to recognize uh, good work um, by citizens uh, that live here in the town of Enfield. And we were contacted um, regarding Cynthia and all the work that she does for us. And we wanted to take this opportunity to present to, Cynth to Cynthia uh, this proclamation thanking her for her service to Enfield. Um, I got to know Cynthia during um, all of the uh, conversations and debate over the Enfield Dog Park, which has turned out to be extremely successful. And uh, folks in the audience, you, you'll get to learn a little bit about Cynthia as I read this proclamation and find out uh, all the great work that she does across town. So here we go, and then I'll give you the opportunity to speak as well. All right? And I love this first sentence, and you're just going to love it. So first of all, it's a proclamation honoring the volunteering contributions of Cynthia White. Whereas for 20 years, Cynthia White, also known as Stretch, <laughs> that's the part I really love, <laughs> has volunteered her services at the Enfield Senior Center by helping in the kitchen setting up for and cleaning up after dances, parties, and other special events, and giving tours. And whereas for the past 10 years, Cynthia has volunteered at three booths at the annual 4th of July town celebration, Loaves and Fishes, the Enfield Food Shelf, and the Enfield Dog Park. And whereas Cynthia has volunteered at the Enfield Food Shelf, preparing bags of food and helping clients carry bags to their vehicles for five years. And whereas after working at Loaves and Fishes for four years, Cynthia has continued to volunteer her time there for the past three years. And whereas Cynthia moved into Mark Twain Congregate Housing in 2014, began to volunteer her time in the kitchen and participated in running the community garden. And whereas, also starting in 2014, Cynthia began volunteering her time to assist the elderly with activities at the Enfield Adult Day Center. Now therefore I, Scott Copen, Mayor of the Town of Enfield, on behalf of the Town Council, the Town Administration, and the entire community, honor Cynthia White for her outstanding volunteering contributions and thank her for her continuing thoughtfulness and generosity towards Enfield citizen. Signed today, September 18th, 2017, on behalf of a very grateful community, Cynthia, thanks for all that you do for us here in Enfield. Thank you. And now she can explain stretch. <laughs> all right. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, Al used to be a volunteer. Right up, right up Al used to be a volunteer on Monday in the kitchen. And I would ask him to put stuff up that I couldn't reach. 
and he would just say, get on your tiptoes and stretch. <laughs> so that's how stretch came along. <laughs> well, one time I saw him at Bay Gwai, and he's down that end, and I'm chopping up this end, and he says, hello, stretch. <laughs> and I just went. <laughs> it was a little, you know, embarrassed. You're a little embarrassed. Little. But now it's stuck. Right. That's okay. A lot of my bingo friends and friends call me Stretch. Awesome. Anything else about what no. you do in town? Um, I like doing it. I just like doing it. It's awesome. All right. Thank you very much. All right, <laughs> our next special guest is our Chief of Police, Carl Sferaza. Come on up, Carl. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, I was planning on being brief, and due to the late hour, I will double that effort tonight. <laughs> But as always, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. So this evening, um, I'd like to talk about three things going on in the police department that I'm very proud of, and I think it's something that all our citizens um, would be proud of. So the first thing I want to discuss tonight is the Scanic River Park. Uh, I th I'm not going to go over old uh, information. We all know the problems we have had at the River Park for the past several years. Um, this year was starting out pretty much um, the same way and uh, back in June well let me just show you this is a picture of uh, the Scanic River Park uh, last year I believe it was um, for anyone that's not familiar with the park it's only set up for eight parking spaces uh, there's not supposed to be any outdoor grilling as you can see here there's probably at least a hundred people in the park if you can see to the right, there's play pens, and there's very limited bathroom facilities. So this, when, when this used to occur, uh, we were always the next morning left with what you see in the upper left-hand corner and not what the natural beauty of the park should be. The biggest problem with that was our own citizens didn't have an opportunity to enjoy the park anymore. Um, this is a state park, so people may ask, why isn't the state stepping up? I can tell everyone that I personally have spoke with the state. I've spoken with councilmen, and we've spoken to the state together. And the bottom line is, uh, in, in past years, they had limited resources, let alone the fact that this year we're looking at a $3.5 billion deficit. The DEP officer assigned to the Scanic River has an area that encompasses Hammonasset State Park. So you could imagine who gets most of the attention. It's not the Scanic River. So DEP's not there. So the bottom line was this year, and the challenge was we were gonna let, were we going to let another year of garbage, parking, and all the complaints and denial of our own citizens the opportunity to use the park? So we got together with the police administration, spoke with the manager, and I made the decision that on uh, June 25th through September 4th, we were going to have an Enfield police presence at that park. Um, because of the uh, frozen positions that the department has had now for two years, we don't have the personnel, on-duty personnel, to assign to that park. They have to answer calls for service. So if it's hit or miss, the people would just flood in. So we had two officers dedicated there, primarily on the weekends, uh, to try to enforce the, the littering, the rowdiness, the alcohol, and, and, and all that type of thing. 
In total, we spent 288 total hours were allocated by the Enfield Police Department for a total expenditure of $17,175. On the right-hand column, this is some of the enforcement action that was taken. Uh, seven infraction tickets, 13 parking tickets, an arrest for a liquor violation, and of course we assisted the fire department twice and DEP. The statistics alone don't tell the story. That isn't the real value. The value was that we had officers there when people went to the park, they followed the rules. And Mr. Mayor, I can't tell you any other project we've undertaken where I've gotten more compliments from the citizens, emails, phone calls, and it made us feel good that we could restore this park back to the people of Enfield. So we're very proud of what we did this year. Um, unless there's a miracle in the state budget, I don't see that happening. I think next year we're going to be faced with the same problem. And believe it or not, the solution is the police presence there. Yes, in a perfect world, it would be the state. They're not here. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, everybody knows the Big E started yesterday up in West Springfield. And I'm especially proud of this. Um, for the past three years now, the people that run the Connecticut building have asked the Enfield Police Department K-9 unit to come up there and do the presentation. Now the reason that's significant is um, I was there yesterday, went to all the buildings, we've all been there. There's no municipal departments there but us. So this year uh, they asked us to be there 21 days. We can't do 21 days, we can do four days or four events. But we were uh, center stage yesterday and the sign on the bottom was right, in, right on the Avenue of States, right in front of the Connecticut building and we have some photographs to show the response yesterday. Those pictures really don't do justice to the thousands of people that were walking by that saw Enfield Police and our canine program there. Um, the residents should understand that our canine program is recognized as one of the top ones in the state, uh, primarily for two reasons. One, the officers that work it, retired officer Chris Moylan, and today we have Officer Chris Dufresne, uh, Mike Colantano, and Brian Croto. And also the canine program would not be as successful as it is if we didn't have the backing of prior councils and the current council. So it's recognized statewide that this is a first-rate canine program. To be on center stage at the Big E I thought was a big deal and we'll be there a couple more times. So if residents go up there and they see Enfield, it's not Enfield, New Hampshire, it's, it's us. It's Enfield, Connecticut. And that just gives you an idea of the crowd that was there yesterday. And finally, um, I think people are familiar with our Enfield Police Explorers. This is the 50th anniversary of their founding. Um, as far as our research was able to show, in the entire United States of America, Los Angeles Police Department was number one, and Enfield, Connecticut was number two. So we're the second post nationally um, to go into existence. Chief Walter Scour put it into place 50 years ago. Originally it was for troubled kids, now it's for kids. And the value of this program has many benefits. Uh, it teaches accountability, responsibility, they gotta keep their grades up. But most importantly, at an age when kids can make bad decisions, this is a group that reinforces positive behavior. A lot of these off, uh, youngsters go on to be officers, state, federal, and a lot of them don't. But they all come back and remember what they learned in the Explorer program. There is going to be a uh, celebration of this on September 30th at Sun Valley in uh, Stafford. And if anybody would want more information on that, Lieutenant Willie Petamonte that heads this up should be back in the office next week. So we're pretty proud of our kids. We're certainly proud um, of our officers and our canine program. And we're certainly uh, very gratified that this year the Scanic River Park uh, was not a problem and the people of Enfield got to use it again. So that's all I have for a presentation. Any questions on this or anything, I'd be glad to answer. Questions for the chief, comments, Tom? Yeah, just money well spent on the Scanic uh, Park. Thank you, and uh, we really need to keep that up also. 
and uh, also the, the explorers, you know, do a lot of uh, great community service too. They they work uh, do a lot for us in Lowe's and Fishes uh, with our food drive that's coming up soon. So you see them at Shoprite, I believe it is, and uh, yep, yep. and be able to donate food right to them. Thank you. Yep. Great job. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Bob. Chief, I'd like to uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to mention that I was part of the Scanic River cleanup uh, this uh, back in July, and I have to tell you that the park was pretty immaculate. I didn't even even get to fill up my bag with uh, garbage and everything. That's so a good you, thing. You, you, it's a great thing. You're doing a good job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And you know, uh, Councilman Crisati, um, my officers that are there, they deserve the credit, not me. They're there, they're the people interacting with the public. Uh, they're patrolling Potter Hollow. And we knew if we put them there, we wouldn't have any problems. It's always though, you know, the other side is, well, it's a state facility, why isn't the state there? Well, they're not. And it's our town and I appreciate the, the comments, Mr. Crisati. Anyone else comments? Yeah, just go ahead, Bill. Just real, real quick, I, I wanna, wanna thank you for Sticking with the, the Scanic um, issue, and it, uh, folks up here certainly are aware that it's been kind of a three and f even four year ordeal. Evolution ordeal, thank you. Um, but it, but it, it, it took, you know, retweaking each year a little bit of something in the mix to, to get the right formula. So I think with, certainly with, with the presence um, that the department was able to, to allocate, um, with very open channels of communication from residents uh, and the different groups that have a stake in, in the Scanic. Um, but even your, eff your personal effort in reaching out and sitting down with some of the businesses in the area, I think was really important because it is kind of does sit oddly enough right in the middle of an industrial zone. Um, so that, that was critical. Um, and at, through the same avenue, I want to thank Brian for kind of that was Literally the first thing I think dropped on your lap um, when you arrived was this um, growing storm down there. So um, certainly you guys have led the effort here to keep it local and to develop the right mix of, of solutions. But even some of the DEP guys I think are really gone out of their way to, to try to accommodate us as best that they can. And um, it looks like we're on the right path. So Thank you, Bill. So thank you. And what what are the two the canines that Enfield has at the current? We have uh, Nova and Bruin. And Bruin. Uh, Bruin will be retiring soon. Uh, unfortunately, has a hip ailment that's not going to get better. Uh, Chris has a new dog already. Um, I, I don't remember the name of the new dog, but uh, Chris is uh, probably the premier dog handler in the state. He's recognized nationally. And you know what? What it all comes down to, it's not just nice to have a pet around it's nice that we have these dogs for officer safety mm -hmm. we have these dogs to detect narcotics and i can go on and on at their accomplishments and again there's a cost to this and i've never come to a council meeting and been turned away that my canine program is not good so again thank you for supporting such a worthwhile effort keeping us safe thank you ed yeah, great job at uh, Scanic. And uh, one of the things, uh, you know, I got some phone calls initially uh, about the cost and why we were paying. But uh, uh, for little cost, we had great, great, great expectations down there. And the neighbors are quiet now. The neighborhood's quiet. We're not hearing noise. Uh, it really worked out. And thank you. And thank your department. Thank you, Mr. Denny. Anyone else? So Chief, thank you for the Scantic. Um, congratulations to the Explorers. So this weekend they were in full force down at the Fort Town Fair. Yep. And uh, your K-9 team did an awesome presentation yesterday at Family Day on the Green. So you hit mm. three um, awesome attributes uh, to your police department. Thank so thank you very much. It's easy when you uh, work with awesome people. That's right. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Carl.
Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is public communications and petitions. So if there's anyone in the audience wishing to address the council, which I think most of you, this is what you're here for. <laughs> um, so we do this semi-orderly. I will, you'll raise your hand, I will call on you and you can be first and you'll come forward to the front table and you will sit down and you will state your name and address for the record and I re must remind people that public communications is for Enfield residents only. Um, please state your name and address for the record. Please keep your comments to no more than five minutes. I get the task to time you. If you hit 4.30, I'll politely ask you to wrap up and we ask that you refrain from the use of personalities and what that means is no name calling. All right, okay, so welcome. <laughs> Um, council members, thank you for your time. As many of you know from our conversations... Can you... Uh, we need your name and address for oh, the I'm record. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Teresa Beebe. I live in Enfield on St. James Ave. Is that okay, or do I got to get my whole address? That's, that's good. Okay. All I'm right. on St. James Ave in Enfield. And, I'm, and I didn't start the clock yet, so you oh. can start. Okay. And you have All to right. see me when you're done. Pardon? You have to see me when you're done, because I have what... Oh, thank you very right. much. Okay. okay. Go. <laughs> um, council members, thank you for your time. As many of you know from our conversations, the Blair Manor community is at risk of closing. We are here tonight to ask for the support of our community leaders and our community as a whole. On May 31st, Blair Manor went into receivership, one of three homes due to the mismanagement of Affinity Healthcare. On September 8th, the court appointed receiver Phyllis and I think her name is pronounced Bamante, filed with the court a recommendation to close Blair Manor. We are reaching out for your help to stop this injustice to the residents of Blair, the Blair Manor community. We are concerned for their safety. Relocation syndrome in 1992 became a formal nursing diagnosis. Tra transfer trauma which is a wave of disorientation and despair so intense that it can kill is a real thing that can happen to people like a broken heart or a mourning of sorts. Imagine, if you will, will the feeling of despair you may have if your home were taken from you, if you were taken from the people you have grown to trust and love like family, if you're taken from your friends, your neighbors, and you're all relocated. Many of our residents who have lived in Enfield their entire lives some for over a hundred years, being transferred out of town to surrounding towns such as Bloomfield, Hartford, Windsor, Stafford, or Manchester. Many of our residents are visited regularly by their loved ones via Dial-A-Ride or the Magic Bus, which is a great program, by the way. Um, oh, I lost my spot. Okay. Um, the bottom line is it would make it impossible if somebody were to be relocated to Suffield or, or East Windsor for somebody to take the magic bus over there to see their family. Um, okay. One of our residents said to me, I feel like I'm being evicted even though I paid rent. This is not our fault. Why are we being punished? And as it turns out, there are interested buyers or investors interested in Blair Manor but to our knowledge, Phyllis has not responded to the people who have expressed to the courts they want to purchase Blair Manor. Family members have told us that they have not been billed since May 31st. We can only imagine that the motives for this would be to show the court a greater loss than there really is. I, I can't uh, fathom why they, if they're citing that we're not generating enough money, why would you not bill? It just doesn't make sense to me unless you're trying to show something else. Um, and this is actually off my script, but I was reading this morning that the state of Connecticut is looking to reduce the number of nursing home beds um, because of the costs. Um, I actually have a, a copy of the report if anybody wants to see it. And uh, to me, I think it's a horrible shame that they're going to do it off the backs of our, res our residents. Okay, I'm going to go back on script. All right. Um, Okay, blah, 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 blah. All right. Blair Manor has a long history of serving the Enfield community for many, of a, for many years, providing thousands of people with medical, emotional, and physical care. Whether it is recovering from a surgery, a stroke, an injury, or a place to call their home. If the court follows the receiver's recommendations, there will be no opportunities. It will never be entered 
uh, 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 opportunities to purchase will never be entertained and our residents will be relocated and our doors will be closed. Please, I appeal to everyone here to do everything in their power to help us to prevent this from happening, whether it means a call, a letter to the court, the or a call to the state or regional patient advocates. Please, our community deserves a chance to survive. And I call Blair Manor a community because that is what it is. It's a community amongst this community. And um, I, I, I happen to know that I'm very proud of all of my co-workers, my family, friends that live at Blair, that their families live at Blair Manor. Um, I will tell you that um, there's a lot of frustration because there's no place for them to express their frustration because they're afraid for their families or, or they're concerned or there's a lot of people here who want to tell you all about the things that have happened for them at Blair Manor. We've had a great outpouring of support at, but we, we want to make sure that it's enough and we're hoping that our, our leaders can help us a little further. All right. I beat the Thank clock. you, Teresa. Good job. Thank Good job, you. Teresa. Yes, you did. <laughs> Teresa. Teresa, Teresa, can you come up and grab this? There's one letter of support for you. Okay, and I'll say that I also brought a copy of our petitions if yeah. anybody who hasn't signed it yet would like to. Sure. Thanks. Great. Thank you. It's superior. Uh, Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members and other town officials. My name is David DeShaka. I live at 5 Adams Road here in Enfield. I'm a lifelong resident, 63 years. My family has been here much longer. Uh, we've had a number of family members who have been Blair Manor residents. I'm here tonight with my wife and cousins to speak from our family's perspective. Between us, there have been five family members who have been residents at Blair Manor over approximately the past 13 years or so. Until recently, I personally was totally unaware of what Terry just, just mentioned. and. When, when I found that out, I was just shocked. Um, we recently became aware of this, the receivership issues and the intent of the ma management company behind Blair to simply close the facility versus possibly selling uh, to enable the operations to continue. And apparently, as we heard, there may be potential buyers interested in the facility, but apparently the option hasn't been pursued. We were horrified absolutely horrified to learn about this. We would be most interested to see some sort of action, whatever help the council can possibly do to prevent this calamity of closing the facility from taking place. Um, in addition, many of the residents there, obviously town residents, taxpayers, they deserve your support. From our standpoint, it's just unimaginable that the management could so callously force these residents to be relocated to other facilities, as well as the devastating effect this, this would have on an amazing Blair staff. These people are absolutely unbelievable, the, the way they care for their patients. You see the love and the caring every day. Um, many of these residents are elderly and they have physical, they have cognitive issues to begin with. Making a move to a different facility could be catastrophic for them and they may not be able to cope with the situation or even survive. Additionally, we've seen the types of personal bonds that exist between the patients or the residents as, as well as the staff members and that would be just horrific to, to see broken. Uh, as I mentioned, over the past 13 years, our family has continuously had at least one resident during those years, and in some years, as many as three of our family members and residents at Blair at the same time. So we feel like we're part of the Blair family, quite honestly. My mother was a resident at Blair for almost four years before her passing. The level of care she received 
in her state of physical incapacity due to complications from an accident and her ensuing dementia and the caring nature of all the staff members who had to deal with her was absolutely amazing. We were always astounded to see how the staff deals with things they have to on a daily basis and they always show such care about the residents and the residents' families. Other family, family members that we've had previously or currently residing at Blair include my cousin's father and his brother and aunt that my cousin and myself share, and my cousin's mother and my aunt is currently there. She's going to turn 101 next month. Mm -hmm. We can't fathom what a forced move to another facility at this point would do to her. She's in such a delicate state at her age, we don't think she could survive it. Over the years, we've seen the amazing level of care provided by the nurses, aides, food service personnel, housekeeping, the whole staff at the facility. All of our family members, all of our family members residing at Blair have received loving care from all. It's absolutely understandable to us why Blair has received five-star ratings consistently, and to close this facility would be an absolute tragedy. With all this in mind, we would again appreciate any action possible to help persuade the powers to be to consider keeping this facility open. Thank you for allowing me to present these thoughts. Thank you very much. Public communications? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Elaine Bacoris. My mother has been a resident at Blair Manor for over three years. When my mom first came to Blair Manor, I was nervous and worried. The, nervous, the nursing staff was going to have their hands full with her. Very quickly, I found that the nurses and CNAs were compassionate, caring, and patient ladies. It really made the transition easier. I knew my mom was in the right place. I want to thank all the nurses and CNAs for their endless support for my mom. And also I want to thank the housekeeping staff and kitchen staff. The ladies and gentlemen that sit here tonight, some have been at Blair Manor for 30 to 40 years. They could have left long before this. They stayed because they care about their patients. They make Blair Manor the comfortable, respectful living place for the residents. Blair Manor is a five-star place where if your family member needed help, you would want them to be there. I realize that Blair Manor is not like the new facilities that are going up, all shiny and new, but they don't have the comfortable, cozy, and home feeling that Blair does. I have, I have spoken to a couple of the residents there, and they are sad beyond belief. They don't know what they're gonna do, and they're gonna miss one another. And if you, could, if you could help these people keep their job and keep the place open, it would be a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Public communications? Anybody else? Yes, sir. thank the council for allowing me to come forward. My name is George Stevens. I'm speaking for my wife, who's a resident at 620 Hazard Avenue, Blair Manor. And I don't want to duplicate everything that's been said, which has been so good. But I'd, I'd like to you rationalize with me for a minute how you downgrade a facility that's five star to nothing in a bankruptcy or a receivership. I mean, when you look at my wife, I, I, I didn't know anything about nursing homes or where to go or what to do. So, fortunately, my daughter was with me when I pulled her out of the hospital. And I have to tell you, she's an occupational therapist, she's a graduate house. She had a list of places to go. And we drove up. I said, well, I didn't want to go to Blair. That place, you know, kind of old. She said, just a minute, Dad. They're five star. You've heard that mentioned earlier. 
But if you take a look at nursinghomes.gov, you'll find their five-star, the Little Sisters of the Poor, five-star, in a five-year waiting period. You'll find Parkway Pavilion, four-star. You'll find Evergreen, a four-star. You'll find Suffield House, one. Now, we're in a greater community here of all these wonderful nursing homes, like you have a greater Hartford. I don't understand why we're encouraging our residents who are really in this place to go to Hartford. Now, if you're going to be a receiver and ask to strip a company and make things go right, let's pick the ones that are doing the job. Now, I think it's very important to, after looking at this and saying, well, what else is new? You want to look at U.S. News, they, they picked, uh, they, they surveyed 15,000 nursing homes. you find this on the web. Of the 15,000, they picked 40 in Connecticut. In that 40, Blair was managed, ma uh, mentioned as one of the 40. There were no mentions of Hartford or any other place. It was the Litchfield, it was the Danbury, and other communities. You can find this for yourself. Now, this telling you you've got something good here. And I think it's very important that we keep these people here. Now, I'm sure they must owe taxes to you, but I'm sure the other facilities too, the other two are in, in uh, Hartford as well. And I think that when someone mentioned, which is very important, which I've been asking you about why, how come the invoices have not been given to the residents? Where's my bill? Where's my bill? They need a piece of paper that has to be paid. Then they get the money, and then they pay. Now, I don't know what's happening with Medicaid and Medicare. Where's the money coming from? Is it slow? Are we tightening up? Did somebody forgot to cross a T or dot an I? Now, these are basic things. They have talked about the people. I could do that all night here. Every one of them is my friends. Now, I've been with my wife for three years. I've seen her every day for three years. I've missed probably 18 days in three years. We've been married 62 years and a very good marriage. And now we're not letting her get moved around by any bureaucratic means. I'm not referring to you. I appreciate the fact that you've given us an open forum. It's still America. It's wonderful. Now, if people, you know, if they, if they know that there's no other salvation and they're coerced to go somewhere else, not directly, but under the table by innuendo, that's, this is not right. You're going to break up a family relationship that's second to none. I can tell you, my daughter said to me when we walked to the Blair Manor, uh huh, we walked down. First thing we, Dad, look at those floors. They're shining. I thought I was in Miami barracks and some sergeant beat me over to get the job done again. I thought I was going over my toes, but it really was beautiful. The cleanliness, the hygiene. I can tell you what's done. I even stop in the night unannounced. Nobody bothers me. We're checked in. We go in. Everything is fine. It's important to you that there are business here in Enfield. I live in Stafford in, in summers. But I'm here every day. I feel like I'm 620 Hazard Avenue. That's how easy it is. Now, I think when the last thing I wanted to bring up, that there are enough beds here. We have now a lot of beds because people feel that we are not viable. Our competition is probably saying, don't go there. They're going to be closed. They're going to be bankrupt. There's a very easy way to put a competitor out of business. You just knock them. I know this. You've been on the ground before. And we can fight that, too, by not changing our ways, the place is still immaculate. There's still three shifts a day going in, and people are still punching the clock. They are a lot, there's a lot of concern, and you'd have the same concern if you were in their position. Now, what's been said, and I think is very important for the benefit of the residents here, family visits are important to the resident. You know, my wife's stroke was very severe. Uh, she can't walk. I get maybe one or two words out of her, maybe a thank you if I've done something right. But we've got a speech therapist there that's been working with her, and we're now getting some conversation after three years. We walked to the Saturday. I saw her with a couple of girls here. They're here tonight. And she, they said, look at her go. She went from here down to the end of the hall. Two people holding her in a wheelchair behind, supported, yes. But she's moving. She's feeling like an entity, like a human being. And we have that capacity at Blair. Don't lose it. Be Enfield. You are a greater Hartford. We don't have to go to Hartford. We got our bills paid here. We can pay our bills, and we certainly you can help us somewhere. I know there's a way for you to do it. I ask for your consideration in that regard, and you've got some wonderful, wonderful people here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. Public communications? Yes, ma'am. No, 
Oh, go right ahead. My name is Rose Farrell. I have nothing to write. I'm just here because I... Right. You said your first name's Rose? Rose, yeah. Can you give me your address, too? Oh, 57 Roosevelt Boulevard. Thank you. Uh, I'm here because I believe so much in Blair, and those women are unbelievable. I had... The first time I was there, I couldn't walk. Well, guess what? They made me walk. Just did. <laughs> and the second time, the same thing. But these women, they know when it's time to be serious, and there's time for jokes and fun. And closing it would be the biggest mistake that was ever made, because then we don't have a choice. Uh, I was at another home for a while, but I wasn't comfortable there. And I got transferred to Blair. So if you can help at all, you would be doing the residents a big favor and keep our nurses together because together that's what makes Blair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rose. <laughs> public communications. Anyone else for public communications? Mr. Serrar? Tom Sherrard, 32 Denunzio Avenue, current chairman of the Board of Education. I am not speaking here on behalf of the Board of Ed. Um, um, Blair, you have my support. Um, I'm not real comfortable coming in front of you guys today. I don't think I've ever been in front of you outside of my board business. Um, over the past few years, there's been some concerns that I've seen happening. Uh, I have nothing but the respect of the separation of powers. I know you probably don't like someone from another board telling you how to do your job. I know it bothers us sometimes. Um, it is a concern nonetheless. Uh, my understanding when you read the town charter is that the, the town council operates very similar to the Board of Education. Everyone who works for the town works for the town manager. And then the town manager works for the town council. Um, when, if you read Chapter 3, Section 9 of the Town Charter, it says that town councilors can't get involved in personnel matters unless it's an official meeting in front of the town manager. Um, over the past few months, I mean, when, a few years back, I saw some things happening that, that looked like that was going on. I expressed my concern. I was told, no, don't worry, we're well within compliance. I was wrong about that. Um, and I, but it's, it showed a, it's more of an... an an approach to doing business, I think. Um, a few months ago, I read in the newspaper, um, people were being involved in, and in, in, appeared to be involved in an employment decision. Um, suggested that they were in the middle of, of, of going over the head of the town manager, or going the head of, of employees of the town manager. And uh, I let it go. Um, it's a concern to me. Chapter 3, Section 9 is one of the strongest worded laws about how people do business. It's one of the few cases in Connecticut law where a person's, uh, where uh, the results of a popular election can be immediately overturned. Uh, that's how serious it is. Um, I know we have a complicated relationship. Uh, the reason I came, decided to come, and I wasn't going to come, was an event happened Friday that, that really put me over the edge. Um, as, a, as the board, we invite counselors to come to schools. We want you to come to see how we're doing, but there's a process to do that. It involves informing the superintendent of schools, or at the very least, informing the principal. Um, after hours, is, is our security policies are a little different, but during school hours or when students are about to be dropped off, it's very clear, at the very least, a town counselor needs to announce themselves to the principal of the school and log in. As a chairman of the Board of Education, I can't go into a school building without logging in. There's only one time that I can think of ever that I didn't, and it was when we were moving to central office. We couldn't find a pen, and then we couldn't find the logbook. But I never left central office. And that's as the chairman. Um, 
there's all kinds of rules and laws that are incorporated in this, especially in this season. You're not allowed to campaign at all. And that's why I'm avoiding personalities. I'm not calling anyone out in particular. But it, it concerns me. Again, it's an approach to doing business that I think is very dangerous. Because as we're always reminded, we are held to a higher standard. And if we can't, higher standard means just that. We, we set the example. And part of that example, and mistakes happen, and I understand that. But the example is, is that we adhere to the letter of the law. And it makes me nervous when the appearance again is there. Whether it be involved in employment decisions or employment controversies, or when it means going and talking to our employees that work for the Board of Ed. Board of Education people can't, can't bypass the, the superintendent of schools any more than counselors can bypass the town manager. And when it talks about investigative powers, that has to happen in an officially constituted meeting of the, of the council, unless empowered directly by a, a verdict of the council. And there's no exceptions to that rule. And that's what makes me nervous. Now I hope, I don't mean to steal any of their thunder, but I'm, I'm very concerned. And I just want to leave it at that. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Sheridan. To get this in front of me so you can hear me. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Um, <clears throat> First, I'd, I wasn't here to speak about the nursing home problem, but seeing that I dealt with the nursing home systems for quite a while, I feel really bad about what's happening there. I think, and I don't know a lot about it, but I think that when you file bankruptcy, you have to have not paid your bills for at least three months in order to be able to even qualify to do that. So maybe we need to look into what that status is because I think part of it is okay we can show that we're insolvent so then we can bail out and file bankruptcy just food for thought um, I'm here actually to speak against the 95 million dollar school thing for JFK um, when the state is in arrears by three and a half billion dollars and now, as we see in today's news, they can't even agree on coming together with the, with the uh, gambling casinos and things. And, they, and now they're fighting over how much revenue that we won't get if they build this other casino that they're looking for in Bridgeport, I think it is. But the other thing was at the last meeting, I had said that the Magnus School cost uh, $86 million dollars. And I couldn't figure out why it cost $95 million to do JFK. And one of you up there made the mention that, well, one was for 600 kids and the other was for 1,200. But the thing they forgot in that equation was we already have the building and property. The brick and mortar is already there. So all we're doing is refreshing it. And if you remember, it wasn't too long ago that the estimates came in at 17 to 20 million to fix it up. But what all of a sudden, got it to 95 million. And, and then the other thing is I talked about the HVAC and why Honeywell wasn't part of that equation. If, if we're doing boilers and HVAC and not having to lay out any capital from our budget and just receive in the savings, well, why wasn't that done? So there's a lot of things that I'm concerned about because I can't believe that we'd be willing. Oh, and then the other thing is, <laughs> I just happened to think of that, too, is the PCB and the caulking. Nobody said anything about what they've done about the caulking. I'm sure we've, over the years, caulked those windows ourselves. Is that caulking still on the market? Do we, you know, who else is at risk? If, if they are at risk at all, I don't actually believe that, but um, unless you go eat the caulking, you know. <laughs> um, but... Um, I'm, I'm trying to make sure from my notes here that I remembered each of my, each of my points. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I like the voting public to know 
that this can be done for a lot less and that when our school enrollment goes down by 200 every year on average and the budget goes up every year what's wrong with that picture how what business could survive like that thank you thank you jack public communications anybody else then thank you very much and i am sure counselors will address <coughs> questions and comments under our next section which is counselor communications so we'll go to counselor communications counselor arnoni yeah when I, I heard this uh a couple of days ago i was i was shocked because over the years um i've never received a complaint about blair manor i've only heard nothing but good things about the facility Uh, you know, with that being said, this is exactly an you know, example of you don't know what you have till it's gone. And, um, and it, what concerns me, it's such a highly regulated industry that, that how this could get through this, even the state regulators to get this far is, to me, I think, a, a, a grounds for an investigation on its own. In the part two where you said that they're looking to actually get less beds in a generation that is the highest amount of seniors coming towards us now uh, of, from the baby boomers, that makes no sense. So I stand by Blair Manor. Um, I'm glad the facility has been in our town uh, and we have two facilities and um, with our, the aging group of our, our uh, seniors here, it's, I, th I believe they're well suited to, uh, uh, especially with the Summers and Stafford, bringing people out that way. So anything I can do, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm there for you. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you, Tom. Councilor Communications, Councilor Denny. Yeah, I uh, already sub uh, signed your petition uh, and uh, she came to my house. Uh, <laughs> knocked on my door uh, but uh, like Tom I was totally unaware of what was going on there and I was just wasn't there that long ago there was a uh, special friend of mine that had happened to be there and he's passed now and uh, uh, it's been years since I was there in a place is you're right it's spotless and uh, I don't know what the problem is but uh, I will certainly uh, try to support it thank you, thank you very much. Councilor Ludwig. Good evening, everyone. Great job tonight. I signed a petition as well. On behalf of the town through the mayor, can we submit a letter? Who's the judge that can file the injunction to at least allow a possibility of, of bid or purchase of the building? Do we have? Do we know the name of the judge that we can send a letter to? Judge Constance Epstein. Do we get anywhere? Could folks send that to the ma manager? And I'm assuming the rest of the council folks wouldn't have a problem if we send. Uh, no. Send a letter on behalf of the town of Enfield saying, please allow, I think it's an injunction, correct? I apologize if I'm using the wrong word. Right, because he. All we would like for is a letter. But we want him to have an injunction so he allows someone to try to purchase the property, correct? Yes. yes. So if you can get the name of the, the judge to the manager, if someone can give. Yes. Yep. So, Mike, not to interrupt yep. you. Go right ahead. But the hearing is tomorrow. I know. So. And I've submitted a letter. Where'd Teresa go? She left. She had so already so have a letter. We're all it's under, it was, I only felt appropriate to do it under my name, and it's on my letterhead. Um, so, but if, so the hearing is, is actually tomorrow. <clears throat> but I think what we could do Send an email? is at least um, if we get a consensus here that just says, like, that a consensus of the council right. at the meeting without... Yeah formal action but that we support exactly um the sale of blair manor to a prospective bidder and not the closing right if everyone's final that correct people are in agreement yes, yes. and it, yes. there is i I'm from teresa she so actually brian i can give you this paper and there's a couple of names uh it's a nancy schaefer who's an ob ombudsman for long-term care um but we can get you the name and email address and if you can Type, type up a quick email um, to her tonight before you go home or tomorrow morning. That would be appreciated. So, I, I two things I promise to be brief tonight because I want to watch the Giants game tonight. <laughs> so, uh, 
Uh, speaking of football, so I just want to uh, yeah, kind of give a uh, just a heads up or a shout out. Our, our sports season has begun at the high school and the junior high, and the kids have started off very well. However, I will say at the last football game, I'm not sure if I can say this publicly, but the refereeing was a bit suspect. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But the team lost 28-27. They played great. It was a great. Uh, it was great seeing so many people from the town show up to both the opening game, which is the week before, last night, and also traveling with all the other teams. So again, in girls soccer, we actually have an opportunity in some of the sports. I'm not going to jinx them where we could have a shot at some state titles this year. But I guess really my only message I'd like to say to the sports teams, the teams that have started off well, again, keep it up, but you got to work harder. you got to work harder because you have a chance to achieve something. And the teams that may have not started off as well as they would like to, it's okay. You're going to overcome the adversity, just keep working hard, and just because you may have lost a game or two doesn't mean your season's over. So again, our kids, if I recommend, if you have any sport that you like, go pick up a game at Enfield High. The facilities are great. The volleyball teams are playing. I mean, really great atmosphere. Support the, support the teams. And again, for folks who are, may have not started as well as they'd like, overcome adversity is the key to life. So in the last thing, and my, so we talk a lot about it. We, we hear about how many great things people do in this town. And they do. This is a great town. And when you come across or you witness it, I feel I am in my position, I should say something. So there's a teacher, he's, uh, he's over at JFK. Uh, I, I'm gonna say his name, because what I thought he did was great. His name is Mrs. Mr. Bailing, or as his math students, past and present, refer to him as Mr. B. So he decided, out of his own time, his own money, to go support, he, he really enjoyed the eighth grade class that he had in, in school. He shows up to their JV soccer game and surprised him with Gatorades. Those little things are what the town of Enfield is all about. I think he deserves a shout out. I thought it was great. And again, that's what's so great about this town. And again, as a math teacher, someone who myself who enjoys math very well, it is cool to be smart. Thank you. It is cool to be smart. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, they already boarded that. Count, yeah, <laughs> Councilor Crisati. Uh, first of all, uh, the people from uh, Blair Manor, uh, I would like to sign that petition that you have. Uh, we're, we're behind you 100% here. Um, and I know that you are recognized, you know, five-star uh, nursing home and um, do a fantastic job over there. So uh, keep, up, keep up the good work and, um, you know, definitely we're all in support of uh, you. Uh, second of all, I'd like to give uh, praise to our Enfield Star Special Olympic team. Uh, over the weekend of September 9th and 10th, they completed in, uh, competed in the Connecticut uh, Special Olympic Fall Festival uh, for our golf and uh, softball teams. Both teams uh, were very competitive. They are to be congratulated on their efforts and their success in their respective tournaments that they had. Um, also, uh, I was part of uh, the Mayor's Advi Advisory Council, which was a very informative uh, meeting that dealt with the, uh, the opiate uh, crisis and uh, with Gene Hoy, Fred Hall, and Gary Wimokley, I believe. Yep. Um, outstanding uh, presentation. Uh, you know, and this almost, you know, with the, the problems that we have, the people of the town really need to know that there are a lot of support services out there, and I just think that it just has to be thrown out there more uh, and advertised more that there is support for people out there. Um, I want to thank uh, the person that came up and talked about um, the panhandling situation earlier. Um, education is really important. I think if we identify the people that do that, and give them the opportunity uh, for, you know, some sort of education uh, to identify why are they, you know, homeless. You know, do we have homeless shelters here uh, in Enfield that, that could help them out? And these people have to be able to make a commitment to themselves to want to better themselves <clears throat> because it's pretty dangerous when you when you go out to the square or somewhere or even yourself like you stated you have people hanging around and it's all they do is they're asking you for things you know and they're in dangerous positions 
so, you know, we, we have to uh, give them look, have them look for employment or something. And, you know, and if, if they don't, then don't allow them to do what they're doing. So, um, so uh, you know, thank you. Thank you. Just want to mention Thanks, that. Bob. Yeah. Councilor Davis. I will be quick. If you have the petition, I'll gladly sign it and support any which way we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, Councilor Sakala. I'll also sign that petition, but um, Mr. Sheridan, just regarding the school, it didn't jump from 17 million to 95 million for the same product that we're going to be getting. For 17 million, it would be paint. Um, some maybe some new floorings and carpeting band-aids nothing there will be no new structures with that 17 million if we went that route and that 17 million <coughs> would come completely from the town of Enfield if we picked the renovate as new for the around 95 million 70 percent of that will be reimbursed that money has been earmarked for educational buildings by the state it's going to be spent on a new school whether it's in Enfield Bridgeport, Weathersfield, anywhere. We're going to pay state taxes for it, whether it's here or another town. It's earmarked for an educational building. So why wouldn't we try to get it and have the best middle school to go along with a fantastic high school that we just built? I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. <laughs> Councilor Communications? Okay. Yeah, you're next? Down. Yeah, if I could. Go ahead, Bill. Um, so, uh, Ms. Beebe and, and, and the folks from Blair Manor, thank you for, for bringing this to our attention last week. Um, I, I, if you don't object, I'd like to, because um, I know there's a lot of folks watching live at home um, and may pick this up in the next uh, uh, 12 hours or so before this hearing. In, in one of the emails uh, that was shared with Scott, there, there was the... Um, email and phone number for the regional ombudsman and assuming that um, that both or, or at least one of them are going to be attending the the court um, hearing tomorrow I'd like to share the contact email if folks at home in particular listening and watching tonight want to uh, drop a note um, it goes to Brenda dot Torres t-o-r-r-e-s at ct dot gov um, and the phone number for the ombudsman's office is 860-424-5211. So brenda.torres at ct.gov. And uh, hopefully we can get a, a flurry of uh, last minute messages uh, to, to reach that office. Um, if, if this is successful tomorrow and we need to learn more, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll be in touch. Um, I know that from looking at, at what we could about affinity healthcare, it looks like um, there have been a perennial state of fiscal crisis now for several years, um, but, but closing a facility that is high, so highly regarded and obviously so very uh, uh, critical to the Enfield community would, would seem not to be the right solution, and um, we, need to, we need to keep pushing for, for something better. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you. Oh, and on to far less exciting uh, matters. I have a, a motion to make. It's our housekeeping item for tonight. Uh, I'd like to make the motion, suspend the rules this evening, and move the following items to miscellaneous. Uh, on the agenda, those items are currently E, F, G, H, I, and J, and potentially proceed to a vote tonight. Motion by Deputy Mayor Lee, Second. seconded by Councilor Falk to move those items to miscellaneous. Any discussion? Sensing none, show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? It ha they have been moved. Anything else, Bill? Um, Scott, through you to, to Brian, I know we had talked a little bit about um, having one more development services subcommittee meeting before this council term expires. Could we chat this week about getting that organized? Thank you. Sorry, thanks. Ed? 
Yes, uh, through the through the uh, mayor and a, to the town manager, uh, I've, I've received a few phone calls. Uh, I was wondering, uh, people are asking me a question, Are is any time in the future are we going to uh, put out feelers to hire a senior citizen director for that facility? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for council communications before I go? All right. Um, first of all, to the folks at Blair Manor, um, thanks for contacting me last week. Uh, thanks for coming out uh, this evening. It's always great to be able to publicize uh, the issues that, that you're facing. Um, we do have some following on uh, social media and Enfield Television, and I know already um, the Journal Enquirer reporter here has already tweeted out um, Will sitting in the back. Um, so it's definitely well worth because it's all about public relations. Um, Teresa has my letter and uh, signature and everyone, I checked, everyone up here, if they hadn't signed the petition already, signed it. So you can say that the Enfield Council is fully behind your efforts. I had the opportunity to visit your facility a couple times over the past years. The most recent time was just a meet and greet with the mayor and they were tough questions. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And you, by visiting and sitting down and being able to, to meet with the residents um, and the staff, um, you do see why Blair Manor is a five-star facility. Um, I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Hopefully our added voices will um, reverse the course of what the receiver is recommending and uh, keep Blair Manor here in Enfield and serving our community. So best of luck to you tomorrow and going forward. Then uh, just a couple of items. Um, so Enfield is part of the four town fair. Enfield, East Windsor, Ellington and Summers, which was this last weekend. That's why Councillor Bosco is not here. He's one of the directors. Uh, fantastic weekend for them. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go Saturday night and it was packed. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, our police explorers and, uh, and our auxiliary um, support the, uh, the police and traffic control efforts around the fair, highly needed. Um, so it was, a, it was a great weekend. We had family day on the green here uh, yesterday, um, sponsored by the Enfield Public Schools, but supported by so many different community organizations and another great day. Somehow Amy Whitbro always picks a very nice Sunday and <laughs> the sun came out. Um, last night, uh, Councillor Arnoni and I had the honor of attending the Mexican Independence Celebration hosted by the Grupo Mexicano Americano. They're an Enfield group of residents and businesses. If you have the opportunity, meet that organization. We have a very large Latino community in Enfield and growing. Uh, they put on a wonderful celebration where we got to meet um, folks, but also learn about the culture a little. And they want to be part of the Enfield community. Um, they're here to, to contribute. And there's a lot of very successful businesses that are supporting their efforts. I'm sure there's many that you go to on a regular basis. Um, so uh, that was an awesome uh, night last night. Uh, coming up this weekend, Source to Sea cleanup, um, 9 to 12 at the Barnes Boat Launch on South River Street to help clean up the Connecticut River and the banks of the Connecticut River, sponsored by the Scanic River Watershed Association. Uh, Saturday night is the Enfield Athletic Hall of Fame dinner. Um, I did send an email out to any counselors. I know Councillor Crisati is going. Uh, Councilor Falk and myself, if anyone else wants to be added, it's $40. I'm not paying for you, but I'll <laughs> reserve a ticket for you and I need to know by Wednesday. Um, also coming up uh, the following week, um, fall for Enfield. It is a free community festival sponsored by Educational Resources for Children um, starting at 10 a.m to 4 p.m. right here on the town green. Family activities, food vendors, craft vendors. A new event uh, on the, for the community on the town green. The next weekend, 
um, on Saturday, October 14th is the 17th annual Jack-O-Lantern Festival. Again, uh, begins at four o'clock here on the town green. What I always find awesome about this event is um, a lot of the kids in our school system carve pumpkins. They're put on bleachers that line the green. And once it becomes dark, the pumpkins are lit up and you just see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jack-o'-lanterns. It's a great event to, to come out to. Um, and then one more comment back to Blair Manor because I got a text um, from State Representative Greg Stokes and he's going to be calling uh, folks that he can get in touch with um, at the state level. It's the first that he had heard about it. Um, they were busy with the budget last week and um, but he'll be making some phone calls as well. So you. you got some tread, so good luck. With that, we'll go to town manager's report. Thank you, sir. Uh, in the interest of the five of us wearing sport coats tonight, I will keep my comments brief. Uh, <laughs> more than happy to address any questions or concerns regarding the project activities uh, report included in the packet. Uh, to the item, uh, Councillor Lee, if uh, Deb McCarthy has not yet been in touch with you. She will. We were just talking uh, late last week about setting up that meeting. Um, and Councillor Denny, uh, we are looking at uh, several options to provide leadership for the Senior Center, and I'll be more than happy to discuss those in greater detail at uh, leadership the next time we're together. So beyond that, sir, more than happy to answer any questions. Questions for Brian. Any questions? All right, in the interest of it's really getting it's warm in here, too. We'll move on to <laughs> town attorney report. In recognition of that, no report. Any, <laughs> any questions for the town attorney? Sensing none. Um, special report, reports of special committees of the council. Any special reports? None? Then we go to old business. Why did my, it's too hot in here and my iPad froze, no. <laughs> Um, old business, <laughs> yeah, no. uh, old business, none, new business, none, all items have been moved from items discussion to miscellaneous, correct? Yeah. So the first item is discussion resolution, resolution authorizing development services to establish a farmland preservation account, revenue account, resolved. Whereas the Enfield Town Council has authorized the Development Services Department to establish revenue account 31042018 417050 for the Farmland Preservation Fund in order to allow citizens and businesses to make donations in memory or in honor of family members. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council specifies that any donations received by the Enfield Development Services Department through the Farmland Preservation Fund will be committed to the purchase of land for agriculture or open space and may be paid from account 31008855-561900. So moved. By Councilor Second. Arnone, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lee. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councilor Paul. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Arnone. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution, resolution <coughs> to amend Chapter 58, Article 3, Section 58-61, et cetera, of the Code of Enfield, <laughs> Connecticut. Whereas on October 5th, 2015, the Town Council adopted Chapter 58, Article 3, Section 58-61, Come on, lawyer, Gina, at, yeah. at sequitur, at sequitur, an ordinance prohibiting aggressive and unsafe panhandling or solicitation. And whereas Reed versus Town of Gilbert 2015 and its progeny have had significant impact on the enforceability of the ordinance requiring amendment thereof. And whereas a public hearing was held on September 18, 2017 to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed amendments to the ordinance. Now therefore be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the amendment of Chapter 58, Article 3, Section 58-61, at sequitur of the Enfield Town Code. So by Second. Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councilor Falk. Discussion, Tom? Just quickly, just for, um, just to tie some, uh, tie some ends up. First of all, thank you, Town Attorney's Office, for 
straightening the legalities of this uh, ordinance out. And we still will be using social services through to Brian, if I could, uh, social services to actually engage each of these uh, panhandlers and uh, follow through with the social services offering the many um, services that we have in this town uh, for food, for um, mostly food, and help them with shelter out of this town if that's needed, because uh, we do not have shelter. But uh, I just want to make sure everyone knows we'll be continuing that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions, comments? Is, Bill? Is, is, this, is this the end, do you think, of <laughs> changes to the, to the code, or are, are there cases that can still tweak this you know when it comes to you know case law as compared to legislation someone can always challenge any of these town ordinances and have it work its way back up to the appellate to the supreme court but the supreme court normally doesn't revisit issues if they've okay. spoken to it it's called race judicata unless there was some major departure or change they would re re decline to hear it you know once they set the bar um, Mr. Lee, pretty much the, the, well, hopefully, people abide by it. Now, they might get taken to court and taken a task if they don't, but as far as the Supreme Court changing it again, I, I would doubt that would happen for quite some time. All right. Well, thanks for staying on top of it. Appreciate it. Any further questions, comments? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councilor Falk? Four. Mayor Copen? Four. Deputy Mayor Lee? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Arnone? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Grisotti? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution amending the Information Technology Network Administrator job description. Resolved that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the classification plan to amend the job description for the following position. Amend one, Information Systems Network Administrator. So moved by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councillor Falk? Four. Mayor Copen? Four. Deputy Mayor Lee? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Arnone? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution, resolution approving the Deputy Director of Information Technology job description. Resolved that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the classification plan to add the job description for the following position. Add one Deputy Director of Information Technology. So moved. By Councillor Falk. Second. Second. Seconded by Councillor Denny. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. Councillor Falls? Four. Mayor Copen? Four. Deputy Mayor Lee? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Arnone? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Grisotti? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the Board of Education to apply for a grant to the State of Connecticut Department of Homeland Security. Resolved that the Enfield Town Council authorizes the Enfield Board of Education to submit a grant application to the State of Connecticut Department of Homeland Security as part of the School Security Competitive Grant Program. So moved. By Councillor Arnone. Second, That's second it. by Councillor <laughs> yeah. By Councillor Falk. I don't know. Can't read along. Sorry. Read Discussion. <laughs> Gina. I do. I have two questions. Um, one, why these three schools? It says uh, Henry Barnard, Parkman, and Alcorn. Um, and two, it indicates that we're going to have to pay the total cost up front, and if approved, then we'll get a reimbursement. So are we going to know if it's going to be approved prior mm. to doing the work? Mm -hmm. um, that's my understanding as to why the schools were selected um, and who might be able to better answer the grant. I would ask Gary to come on up, if you would, please. and. Address any further questions that council might have. Writing no, I know on the spot. Look at that sharp dressed guy. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> he wishes he wasn't. Yeah, I know. He's like, why did I choose to wear a sport coat tonight? <laughs> a little warm? All right. Did you hear Gina's question, Gary? Yes. Um, 
the schools are basically chosen based upon the <clears throat> timeline of which we can get this accomplished. Currently, this statute, the work has to be done by June 30th. Mm -hmm. The application doesn't go in until October 2nd. Typically takes the state about a month to approve or deny. Once that happens, the projects that we're suggesting have to be done when there's no children in the school. So that limits us to April vacation and June. So we don't have a lot of things that we can get done under the constraints that are here. Okay. Um, well, I understand that and I appreciate that and that's information I did not know. I, I guess I'm I guess I'm a little concerned or confused as to why we're choosing Alcorn when there's no children there on a daily basis. Um, and we're not doing Enfield Street School or I believe Crandall doesn't have a vestibule either. Alcorn has the Transitional Learning Academy is still there. Um, and that one is basically because that can be done because of the location of it during school hours because this, the school is at on the first floor on the ground level and this would be on the first floor level and to answer your other question the grant application goes in they would approve or deny any one of the three or all three of them historically in the first two years we have not been granted all of the buildings that we have applied for at that point we have to fund it because it's a reimbursement grant So, so we have to pay the expenses up front and then and we then cross our fingers that it's going to be no it gets approved. it you will get the money back it oh. just the state may only approve one of those buildings or two of those buildings mm -hmm. even if we apply for three historically the first two years of the grant that we applied for buildings we did not get approval for all of the buildings we requested okay so i don't know if we'll get all three or one of them or none Okay. Thank you. Does that mean if we don't get the grant, we don't do the work? Unless it's funded in some other way. All right. So it won't happen if we don't get the money. Period. Mike? So again, this is semantics for me. So that is that why there is no impact to the budget? Yes, that is. In theory, is. if we're allocating 114000 it's coming out of some line item that we didn't have allocated prior. That is correct. There is a limited line item for this work to be done. So when we pay the full initial cost, there will be some access to unallocated funds. But then when the town is reimbursed, that money will be returned. So, so curious, why would the state reject it? Is it simply because they don't have the money, or is there other reasons they, they why they wouldn't? A, they have a limit. Um, I don't know how, how much they funded for this program for this year so it's funding basically it's not necessarily the 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 conception of the work or the Correct. value of the work Correct. or the project excuse me all right thank you any further questions yeah, I, go ahead Bob uh, getting back to Alcorn um, un unless I'm wrong I thought ETLA was at Fermi High School no they're not they moved back they never moved they never moved Okay. All right. Thank you. Further questions? Sensing none. Roll call, please. Thank Council. you, Gary. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution referring the proposed acquisition of property from the 2017 tax sale list to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So moved. Hold on, I gotta read it. I gotta read it. I gotta read it. They're not all that Whereas small. 46 Cottage, yeah. Whereas 46 Cottage Green Parcel ID 01250001040 was identified in the 2017-2018 Top 10 Troubled Properties, and whereas the town seeks to acquire the property 
and whereas pursuant to the requirements of Connecticut General Statutes Section 8-24, municipal acquisition of real property must be referred to the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission for a report. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby refer the proposed acquisition of the above reference property to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statutes Section 8-24. So moved. Second. By Councillor Arnone, <laughs> seconded by Councillor Falk. Discussion? Scott, sorry, one quick question. Mike? Oh. Through the mayor, that, sorry, question to the town. <laughs> town. So when we acquire, we're going to sell this property, right? The, the goal is to eventually, quit, or I'm assuming quickly sell this, put up for sale? Uh, yes, the issue is we want to, um, the lean and fine burden is too great. So we want to kind of clear that off, put some lipstick on that pig, Got and it. put it back out on the market. Thank you. Further questions, comments? <laughs> He's just waiting, <laughs> waiting for a topic to say, put the lipstick on that pig. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Falk. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Arnone. Four. Councilor Sakawa. Four. Councilor Grisati. Four. Councilor Davis. Four. Councilor Denny. Four. Tonight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. That completes miscellaneous. The next item is public communications. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Sensing none, Councilor Communications, Deputy Mayor Lee. Uh, just, just real quick, um, I wanted to compliment uh, Councilman Sakala's take on the JFK project earlier tonight. I thought that was pretty spot on. I mean, it is, it is a discussion about whether Enfield can afford the bonding but when you put it into context that the building is, there is going to be a building built, the funds have already been appropriated at the state level or committed to, um, and we are making the case to right size our school district for the next few generations. Um, Kennedy is a 50 year old building. It needs dramatic attention to bring it up to code and standards and um, it's been a goal of the last few councils, which the public has supported, to fix that building, get rid of those trailers, and bring it into the 21st century. So um, it's far more expensive to let it sit and do it piecemeal or to keep throwing Band-Aids. There's the lipstick in the pig. That's what we were going for earlier. Um, enough with the lipstick. It's time for a makeover, and, uh, and I'll be supporting the effort in November. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Any further councillor communications? Then is there a motion to adjourn? No. By councillor oh. Davis, seconded oh. by councillor really? Sakala. <laughs> by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good evening.